So, very serious story here today as a new warning is issued from the FBI about possible attacks by ISIS on American servicemen and women here in our country. The bulletin reads like this. The FBI and DHS recommend that current and former members of the military review their online social media accounts for any information that might serve to attract the attention of ISIL, ISIS, and its supporters. Katie McFarland, Fox News national security analyst and a former deputy assistant secretary of defense from the Reagan administration. KT, good morning. Good Happy morning. Thanksgiving. It's good to have you here. Uh, th this is the kind of thing that we saw happen in Canada right. and what we saw happen in the streets uh, of, in London as well, in England as well, uh, and a great fear that the social media that we've become so accustomed to using could be turned against us here. Yeah, and it is a new weapon. It is it's asymmetrical warfare. It's easy. It's cheap. Everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody's got an internet connection. So here's how it happens. Um, I met with the president of Iraq in the fall, and he said, do you want to know why that 30,000 person Iraqi army fled from ISIS in, um, in the city of Mosul in June? He said, everybody had a cell phone. All the generals took the cell phone to battle, and they got text messages from ISIS saying, if you don't lay down your arms and run away right now, we're going to slaughter your families. They put their cell phones down, they took their uniforms off, dropped their weapons, they ran away. Their soldiers saw, the generals are leaving, we're out of here too. That's how it happened. Now, the next step of this, though, is the social media cell phone part of it, that every military personnel is very dependent on it. How, why? They communicate with their families that way. Yep. They communicate with their friends. If they're deployed overseas, they survive on social media. Every ship in the United States Navy has its own Facebook page. So anybody who wants to do harm to our military, they just go online, they look at that, they see he's deployed, his family's home alone. Now we have a target. That's why it's so worrisome, because it's easy, it's cheap, and it's a no-brainer if you're ISIS doing asymmetrical warfare. I, I mean, obviously, they're encouraging them to lock it down, to put all the privacy structures in place that you can. But we see, you know, even in, you know, the target credit card yeah. uh, environment, you know, there are ways to get through the, these firewalls. So, you know, what are we doing to sort of, you know, is there a way to kind of turn this against them and figure out sort of a, a way to fight back against well, it? Well, I think that that would, in fact, be the next step. We have now the capability. We didn't have this 10 years ago. We didn't have it five years ago. We now have what's called metadata, big data. We have the ability to take aggregate data and look around to see where's the anomaly here? Where's the guy who's spending way too much time on that jihadi website? And then pinpoint, not not behavior, not, not stereotyping, not profiling, but terrorist profiling. And then single those people out and then have a special look at them. Because the new wave of terrorism is not just going to be this text message. It's going to be the guy who has never traveled to the Middle East. He has never gone to a jihadi website training camp. All he's gone to is the website. He's found out how to do it. He's angry. He's get, he has a target down the street, takes out the axe, and there he goes. Yeah, but I mean, my fear is that something like this will happen and that the person who was responsible for it will be somebody like the Zarnayev brothers or the guy that they right. took into custody in Minnesota recently yeah. where they say, oh, you know what, it turns out he had been looking at a lot of jihadist websites, but when I talk to people uh, who are in the intel community, they say, look, you know, Martha, our hands are tied in a yeah. lot of these things. We can't get into that data the way people think that we can. And how can we open up? that world to make it easier for them to do just that. Well, look, we're, we're the United States of America. We can do just about anything we want to do and put our minds to. We need to get our, our the civil liberties. We need to protect those. But we also have new abilities that we don't have to impinge on the civil liberties of Americans, that we can aggregate out the people who are have behavior patterns of terrorists, and then we can look at them more closely. That doesn't deny the civil rights or the privacy rights of you and me, but what it does do is use the technology that only we have to to find those people and find them before they commit terrorist attacks. Don't arrest them, but let's look at them. Let's track them before they become operational, before we see yet another you know, axe-wheeling, rifle-toting guy who's gone and screams you know, jihadist phrases as he goes to attack civilians. Very scary. KT, thank you very much. Thank you, we'll see you next time. Right about nine.